I've had the Xbox Elite Controller Series 2 since January of 2020 and I decided against doing a review at that time because I wanted to see if Microsoft fixed some of the durability issues that the first gen controller had, which meant I would have to use it for a few months to see if anything would come up. So in this video I'll go over some of the improvements Microsoft added to Series 2 and I'm going to talk about how the controller held up over a year of constant use. The Xbox Elite controller is by far the best controller I have ever used despite its flaws. The first gen version was infamous for being poorly built which caused the controller to wear out very quickly. The rubber grips on mine started coming off within 6 months of heavy use which is an issue when you're talking about a controller that costs $150. After the first year the entire bottom left rubber grip came clean off the plastic body of the controller. And around the same time where the rubber grip came off the controller, I started having issues with certain button presses not registering properly. Pressing right on the D-pad, for example, became hit or miss, either constantly registering double presses or none at all, which made navigating menus harder than it should. Pressing hard would make it work about 95% of the time, but by doing so, you're shortening the life of that button, so either way, you'll have a problem eventually. Lastly, the analog stick started getting loose within just a few months, which wasn't all that surprising because this is one of the most widespread issues of that controller. These are the only three problems I've experienced myself aside from the durability of the materials used on the controller, but a quick Google search will bring up a lot of forum posts from users with all sorts of different issues. With Series 2, Microsoft promised to address some of the complaints, including the durability issues, and they claim to have delivered a solid improvement on that regard. But did they? Let's start out with what's different. There's Bluetooth support on this new version, which makes it easier to pair with cell phones. The proprietary wireless connection method of the previous controller is still here on Series 2, but it's only used when connecting the controller to an Xbox or the wireless adapter that's available for PC. For everything else, it's gonna use Bluetooth, which means you won't be able to toggle between the two different pairing methods, and you don't need to anyways, thanks to the automatic switching. One of the new features I was skeptical about was the addition of the much-requested built-in battery. If you've ever used one of those plug-and-play battery packs that Microsoft sells for Xbox controllers since the Xbox 360, you probably know that they suck. They don't last long and within just a few months the battery is pretty much dead. For that reason, I immediately started questioning the longevity of the controller. With no way to swap out batteries on Series 2, you'll be stuck with the same one battery for however long it lasts. And I'm happy to report that my experience with it has been positive. I've used the controller almost on a daily basis on both my Xbox One and PC for just over a year and there's been no signs of battery degradation so far. At least nothing noticeable. The controller comes with a USB Type-C charging dock that you can either leave inside the case or on your desk. There's a magnet inside the dock that will literally snap your controller into position, making sure the induction pins are always perfectly aligned. A light that sits between the pause and the menu button will light up orange to show you when the battery is running out, and it will turn green when fully charged. When using the controller, it remains off, so no need to worry if yours isn't on, when you're playing games. That's normal. If you're not a fan of using the dock though, you can charge your controller using the included USB-C to USB-A cable plugged straight into your Xbox or PC. You can use the controller while it's charging, so there's never a situation where you have to wait for it to charge before you're able to use it as long as a USB port is within reach. All of that said, the first thing you're probably going to notice is how much better built the controller feels the moment you take it out of the box. It's slightly smaller than the first one as well and it feels more comfortable to hold. The previous controller had a weird rubber material that would get sticky over time. The new one though has a different rubber material that doesn't get sticky. Another thing that Microsoft reworked were the grips. The grips on the previous one went from the top all the way to the bottom and around the controller with a seam right down the middle and it proved to be a poor choice because over time that entire piece would start to come off. The new one has a cutout grip that extends to the middle front section in a diagonal and wraps up all the way to the back of the controller. This new design gives you a lot more confidence that's going to last longer because it feels more premium and the nicer texture helps it a lot. One of the main reasons why anyone buys the series controller is the back paddles. 
For me personally, who play a lot of racing games in manual with clutch, it's more convenient to map the gear shifts to the back pedals than having to press two of the face buttons at the same time. The Series 2 controller have redesigned pedals that are both smaller in size and shorter. Now, it was weird at first because I was so used to those oversized pedals of the first controller that I didn't like the new design on Series 2 at first. But within a day, my brain had already adapted to it and looking back now, I much prefer the pedals on Series 2. Whenever I go back to the first controller, the pedals feel gigantic and uncomfortable. Aside from all of the other issues, one of the complaints I saw the most often was about how soft the analog sticks feel on the first controller, especially so when compared to how stiff they used to be in the Xbox 360 controller. So Microsoft tried to kill two birds with one stone and introduced a revised design for the analog sticks on Series 2, while letting you customize the tension on each one. You just need to take the sticks off and use the tool that comes in the case to either up or lower the tension. And like I said, since most of what I play is racing games, I like to make them just a tiny bit stiffer as it almost works like a natural dead zone. But you can make them very loose if you wish to do so. Speaking of the case, just like the first controller, it comes with an extra faceted D-pad you can easily swap out and a few spare analog sticks. There are tools like the larger ones, one that's exactly the same as the ones that are on the controller except for it's taller, and a convex one. Unfortunately, since these new sticks take advantage of the new design, that means you won't be able to use any of the spare parts that came with the older controller. The triggers also got a small upgrade with texture that helps a little bit with the grip and now they offer a 3-step lock up from the 2-step lock of the first-gen controller. What this does is shorten the distance you need to press your trigger before it registers by physically placing a stop on the trigger. The built-in memory on the Series 2 controller lets you store up to three different profiles up from the two of the previous one. Now that I covered the changes and improvements, let's move on to the main topic, durability. As I said at the beginning of the video, one of the biggest issues with the first controller was how poorly built it was. I'm very careful with my stuff, always washing my hands before handling the controller, always cleaning it up, but it was a losing battle. No matter how careful I was with that first controller, it would pick up dirt that wouldn't come out no matter how hard I tried to clean it. Storing the controller inside the case when I wasn't using it just slowed the degradation a little bit, but it happened quick regardless. These were the concerns I had going in on Series 2, and well, it's definitely a massive step up in that regard. What Microsoft did here, although far from perfect, is a noticeable improvement over the first one. I've been using this controller for twice as long as it took the older one to start wearing out and the rubber grips are still in place and intact. It did pick up some dirt from using, you can't help it. It's rubber, so stuff that floats in the air may get stuck on it and build up over time and unfortunately there's nothing you can do about it. The only piece of the controller that seems to be starting to come off is where the rubber grip cut out meets the bumpers, which might be a result of pressing them and accidentally rubbing my finger over it. The analog sticks still loosen up over time, although nowhere close to how fast they did on the first controller, but thanks to the new design, all you need to do is pop off the stick, tighten up the screw and it's as good as new. I haven't had any issues with the D-pad so far, though I gotta admit I've been three times as careful with it. I don't play fighting games or anything that's heavy on D-pad use out of fear it's going to screw it up, so my use may not represent what someone who's constantly pressing it would. I haven't had any connectivity issues either and the battery is great. It's around the advertised 40 hours and there's barely been any noticeable battery life degradation yet, but it will happen eventually. Some of you might have noticed that the right trigger lock on the back of my controller is broken. This is both my fault and also Microsoft's. It's my fault because I accidentally bumped it against the dock when I was taking it off to use it but also Microsoft's, as it wasn't anywhere near as hard of a bump to justify most of that piece breaking off the controller like that. Regarding issues with the buttons, I've had two so far. The first one I've had since day one, and it's on the A button. It had that sticky feeling you often get when buttons start to go bad, but a quick Google search brought up a lot of people with the exact same issue, with many reporting that once that glue that sits underneath the button wears off, that stickiness goes away and that's exactly what happened to mine. It took nearly two months for it to wear off though, so it takes a bit of patience. But the actual problem I've had with it showed up after a few months of use. 
The A button fails to register button presses sometimes. Pressing it harder does the trick, but I'm not a fan of doing that because it may create problems down the line. The second and last issue I've had is with the right bumper and this one is a lot similar to what I had on the D-pad on the first controller. It either constantly registers double presses or none at all. A harder press does the trick, but again, it may create problems down the line. Other than that, the Xbox Elite Controller Series 2 is a solid improvement overall over the first one. Still, there is room for improvement, so here are some of the things I like Microsoft revised on the next one. The cutout seam that meets where the bumpers are needs to go. Maybe have it follow the same diagonal as the middle section and have it sitting flush with the controller like the rubber grips. The bumpers and D-pad still need to be improved. Maybe a new design approach like they did with the analog sticks will do it. This rubber material on the Series 2 controller feels and holds up better than what was used on the first one, but I like Microsoft to keep looking to improve the quality of the materials and maybe use one that doesn't absorb dirt as much or one that's easier to clean. On top of that, they could offer an official cleaning kit people can buy to properly clean their controller. Lastly, I would love to be able to buy spare parts straight from Microsoft. For a controller as customizable as this one, it's a shame they don't offer a way for people to buy custom parts to get their controller exactly the way they like it. And that's it, I don't have much to complain about Series 2, it's a very solid controller that improves upon most of what didn't work on the first one and I'm happy with that. Series 2 goes for $180, which is a lot to ask for a controller, but I personally feel it's worth it. Whether it's worth it to you or not depends on what you expect from a premium product like that and how much you're willing to pay for it. Hope this video helped clarify the concerns some of you may have about it. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.